thanks again for staying late and uh and um just really appreciate you taking time out on a friday night to uh to present to us so i'll uh, hand it over to you okay no problem have you given me presenter rights that wasn't showing up there okay let me double check oh i haven't yeah let me do that um, gonna help me enormously yeah let's see there you are okay all right promoted thank you very much yep okay so let me just get my screens running and swap this around before we present Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes. Introducing uh, end, introducing endpoint. Yep. Okay. So introducing endpoint analytics is what we're going to talk about for uh, about the next forty five minutes ish. Um, and it's going to. This is a new feature that's coming to um, into endpoint manager. That's. Uh, We've been crying out for, I suppose, for quite a while, um, the ability to detect and remediate in, uh, on something based on what we would have done, I suppose, with Configuration Manager um, through the likes of Configuration Baselines. Um, but there's a lot more than that. So uh, first of all, anyway, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Morris Daly. I'm a senior cloud architect for a company uh, based out in Norway called Cloudway. Um, and I'm an Enterprise Mobility MVP for the past four years. Um, 10 years of my career, the past 10 years as being uh, managing architect and configuration manager environments. Um, I've worked now for over 20 years in the IT industry. Uh, in fact, I'm 40 next week, so that's fantastic. I won't be wallowing in self pity. Um, I'm an international speaker, um, and I also run a, uh, a blog along with a a lot of other talented individuals called msnpointmanager.com, or as it's formerly known, scconfigmanager.com. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at mode underscore it, and uh, there's the blog site again. So, so through the looking scope, um, I think we agree. Uh, end users complain a lot. Um, it happens. Uh, I was a systems admin for many, many years, and um, there's always that kind of age old question of when we go down to the PC and we don't find the problem, did the problem exist? And that's something that's come up a lot. Um, and you know, if we go back to um, to Microsoft Ignite last year, uh, which I'm going to show you a video of now in a minute, a snippet from Brad Anderson, um, it's something that Microsoft have been looking to address. You know, being able to quantify um, what the end user experience is like. Um, it, it's very easy for us to tell, you know, how much CPU, how much RAM processors are consuming. But when the user comes in in the morning and they tell you, oh, I, I come in, I press the button on my machine and I kind of wait 10 minutes and I come back and it's still not ready. Um, is that something that they're over exaggerating about or is this actual factual uh, information you're getting? So if anyone was at Ignite 2019, um, when they they initially talked about endpoint analytics, um, you might remember uh, Brad Anderson. Hopefully, it's going to play back the audio here, so it's only a, bit, a clip of it a minute long. Uh, we're not getting the audio from him. You, oh, you're not getting audio. Uh, 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 I don't know how you said that. All right, hold on one sec. I think I can change. Okay, yeah, it doesn't seem to want to present the audio on that. Okay, that's a bit of a fail, but uh, <laughs> basically, yeah, okay. Basically, I, I, I'll um, I'll narrate this. Okay. 
So this is where um, Brad has got a, a Windows Surface 3 laptop and he's demonstrated to the audience that he's going to cold boot the device um, and we're going to have a, a stopwatch basically just running countdown to see how long it takes to get to what they call a productive desktop and that is something where you are using an application. So we start the device and we've got a counter running at the moment and we're getting up to around about 12 seconds on this device. So, I mean, look, that's very quick as it is. You're five seconds and you've got your Windows Hello and you've got your desktop within 10 seconds and within 12 seconds, you're running your browser. Um, so that's something then that, that Microsoft um, have been looking out for and being able to quantify, you know, what is that experience for um, the end user? So the challenge for IT departments, of course, the goal for us all as uh, IT pros and for those working with it, with our environments is to make sure that all users are productive because a productive user is someone that's earning money for the company. Um, all devices are responsive and that management is lightweight on IT resources. So basically we want, um, we want our cake and eat it really. We want for something very lightweight, but we want uh, everything moving all the time. Um, kind of instant access to all machines, nothing ever slows down so that if someone has to hop into a Teams meeting, for instance, that they're not, you know, 10 minutes late because they said that their computer had to have time to start. Um, and that productivity isn't affected on production lines and all manner of events. So, and then what happens is security comes along and they say, well, we need to make the device as tightly guarded as possible. So we need to have lots of uh, detection mechanisms for malware, ransomware, and user invoked issues, uh, you know, browsing, wrong site, phishing attempts, and so on. And what they come along to do is they say, okay, well, let's install a whole bunch of third party security products. We've all seen that happen. Um, I think going back to the Windows 7 days, it was more prevalent um, with the, the move to Windows 10 and with, you know, Defender and Defender ATP today, um, we see a lot of companies actually just uh, moving away from those third parties and just consolidating uh, with their license in particular. Um, and of course, the other thing we want to do is we want to heavy lockdown machines with heavy use of, of GPOs, or as I used to call it, we'll bring a nail machine to the ground. Um, because it just makes sure that, again, it's security driving that goal of making sure that all your devices are responsive all the time. The trouble is that when you start introducing all of these factors together, the end user experience kind of drops off slightly. So we end up getting calls to help there saying, you know, my machine takes forever to start. And that's, you know, forever is a technical term. Um, it can be anywhere from, you know, one minute to an hour, who knows? Um, but when you're sitting in front of a machine, it's like watching paint dry. So, you know, that two minutes to start a machine might appear to be 10 minutes in someone's head. Um, and we then we get into this kind of scenario where it's, I don't restart my machine and refer to my first point because it takes forever. And what, what's the problem there is, if you're not restarting your machines, well, you've got a whole bunch of Windows patches that are building up and they are not being applied because you need a reboot to install them. And we've all had this. So your manager comes up to you and they say, hey, this machine of mine's running really slow. And then they get a brand new one and it's top of the line, i7, a quad core, lots of RAM, uh, and it's still no better. Um, the end user experience is still an issue. And this is really what, you know, is a case of expectation versus reality. So we all want this um, to go as fast as possible. IT to be as streamlined um, as possible and be like that kind of Formula One car where uh, things just work. Um, but then security come along and they say, we need an armored truck. Okay, and there's reasons for that. And then we end up with the end user experience. It's kind of somewhere towards the middle. Uh, you know, could be better, it's fine, but, or really is this how good things can get um and one of the the points that 
Brad made at uh, at Ignite was the fact that Microsoft, um, through a third party, had quantified that by removing uh, lots of third party applications and um, and management agents and so on, that you could have a significantly better performant uh, machine. And that's actually something I'll show later on um, with a video showing you uh, three different environments. Uh, the first of which is managed purely through Configuration Manager um, with a lot of legacy GPOs that need to be cleaned up. And you can quickly see the difference between the, uh, the experience of the end user. And of course, as an IT engineer, you get asked then to quantify the issue. Is this a thing in your organization? So you have to sit down and determine the most common models in your environment. You have to get them into a room, sit in front of them, log in as a normal user, and use the stopwatch. OK, that's the old way of doing things. How long does that model take to start up? How optimal is our image? Um, you can you know, run group policy modeling till you're, you're blue in the face, but until you actually sit down and try and see what it looks like for the end user, there's a lot of variables you don't know. So what Microsoft have done now is they've taken all of this and they've put it into something called endpoint analytics. Um, so that saves you from doing this kind of stuff, sitting down and doing management reports. So in the screenshot, I've actually just grabbed something from endpoint analytics, but this is something that you would have done possibly manually before. You know, and every, as I say, every IT engineer loves filtering data in Excel and publishing reports for manager, right? Yeah, you can vote now in the chat if you want, but I think most of you will go for the second option. So the answer is endpoint analytics. Um, it's been coming for a while. Um, I've been personally playing with it now for a good couple of months. Um, well, actually, probably about six since the since we got into our private preview. Um, and both me and a colleague of mine, Jan Kettle, have been doing um, quite a lot of different automation stuff um, through endpoint analytics and proactive remediation, which is one of the features that we get. So, so far, I've kind of alluded to the fact about startup performance being the, the main thing that you get out of this. But you also get proactive remediation. And what that is, is basically you know, configuration baselines in the, in the cloud. Um, and with the recommended software is a bit of a, a thing where it's it's simply recommending, OK, you could do better with uh, having your machines enrolled in autopilot or having them on Windows 10 and, and so on and so forth. So quick overview. It's cloud driven analysis of um, your performance, regardless of whether your device is in the cloud or it's managed on premise. Um, so this integrates with Configuration Manager and Intune. And it aims to get you to improve the productivity in your organizations by monitoring this. So kind of one of the things we can do is we can take snapshots of this. I'll show you how to do that so that we can compare uh, what an environment looked like this month compared to next month compared to the previous month and so on uh, as time goes by. So if, for instance, we decided um, we took a bunch of machines, we had a particular product, a security product on, um, and we decided we're going to change that, and we put in a new security product. We can go ahead and quantify the differences. And of course, yeah, for all of you that love Excel, it still provides data in Excel format if you want it. So what are the requirements for endpoint analytics? Well, Intune is fairly much easy, so it's uh, if you all all flavors of Windows 10, bar the home edition, um, which makes complete sense. Um, your machines must be Azure AD joined or hybrid Azure AD joined, and obviously they need network connectivity. Um, you don't need rocket science to work that one out. For configuration manager, you must be on at least uh, current batch uh, 2002. Um, uh, the clients must be on the latest version as well, and you must be tenant attached or uh, co-managed. With all those in place, um, it's really simple to set up. Um, again, something I'll mention a few times here, but this is a preview. Um, 
so Microsoft are still making tweaks. Um, it's not the final release as such. Um, so again, like any preview um, that's out there, just take it things with a little pinch of salt. If it doesn't work quite right today and it works right tomorrow, um, just be aware, you know, there's engineers in the background. Don't give them a hard time. They're trying to make this better. But um, so far, it's giving us uh, a, a good a good thing, a good addition into uh, in, in, in the Endpoint Manager. So um, what we have to do, just log on to the Endpoint Manager or Endpoint Microsoft.com, the Endpoint Manager console um, portal, should I say. Um, just remember, start using that one. Stop using the Azure portal. Um, I've very much favored the Azure portal in the past, um, but again, this is progress. Um, so then we need to um, log in and uh, in, in Configuration Manager, we expand the hierarchy, uh, go to Cloud Services folders, click on Co-Management, uh, right click on Co-Management Properties, and we configure the Upload tab. I'll, I'll show you that in, in a separate tab. Actually, I think that text should have been taken out. So how does Endpoint Analytics work? OK, so let's just take the two different scenarios here. So on the left hand side, we see Configuration Manager Managed Devices. Uh, all that happens here is they don't talk directly to Microsoft. Um, they are talking to Config Manager, and Config Manager is proxying the data up through the connector, up into the gateway, and uh, ultimately then it's showing up in your portal through um, MS Graph API commands. Um, within Tune, the devices are talking directly, so they get a uh, policy come down directly from Intune and data that is sent up from the device. Um, sometimes there can be a bit of a delay in this. I am noticing this evening, I was hoping to show you something. I'm just waiting for my machines to check in because uh, I did make a typo. Um, but the, um, you can basically get uh, data sent from devices on an hourly basis, uh, depending on what, what you're, you're doing. So enabling the preview is really, really, really easy. Question for you, Morris. Um, yeah. Uh, desktop analytics versus endpoint analytics, is one replacing one, or what's the difference there? No, the two of them are going hand in hand. Endpoint analytics is really just talking about the end user experience. So it's not, you know, whether you're your device is compatible or it's got driver crashes, that kind of stuff that you get in desktop analytics. This is just about focused on what the end user sees. So um, you can look and see, OK, well, you know, is there a process that's killing the machine um, rather than focusing on, um, well, you know, what 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 is the software on the machine? Um, that's really where it's coming from. OK, thanks. So uh, look, this is super easy. Um, can you see the screen? It's in front of my my PowerPoint. Yep, see it. Yep. Okay, good. Um, really super simple. This is just a demo environment. It's not enabled. Um, but here we're going to say we're going to collect data from all cloud managed devices. We just click on start. Okay, and it's going to give us our uh, initial tenant uh, information. Okay, so there's a baseline um, which will be built up then over a number of days once your machines start checking in. Um, and then what we can do is we can define baselines as we go. So as I said before, we can say this is what our environment looked like in July. This is what it looked like in, in June and August and so on. Um, so when you go to proactive remediations, which is something I, I'll go through um, in, in a demo, but uh, what we need to do here is we just need to agree um, that you are a global admin to just confirm that you're you own a tenant and you and you have those licenses in place. So you need uh, Windows 10, Enterprise E3 or E5, or Education A3 or A5. So if you've got something like um, your Microsoft M365 license, you'll also uh, be covered. So we we'll confirm that. And then what will happen is in the background, uh, Microsoft are actually going to add in two scripts here. Um, there are some additional repositories that we can have a look at. Uh, Microsoft provides a link to them to, to give you some ideas on what you can add in here. And I'll show you some more stuff that we've done. 
So that's just as simple as this setup in Intune, but let's just go back here and have a look how we enable this. So a configuration manager, um, we need to configure data uploads. So we open the console, we go into the administration blade, clicking here, we expand the hierarchy configuration cloud services folder, and we go into co-management. We then go across our co-management um, uh, service, we right click, we go to properties, uh, and we get this property screen up. We go to this tab here, configure upload. So we want to upload to Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. Now you can select just all devices if you want, which is recommended, or you can set a collection, which in this case I'm just sending a limited collection which contains all Windows 10 systems. And we're enabling Endpoint Analytics for devices uploaded to Microsoft Endpoint. So we just click those and we are done. Um, there's a link there to the documentation as well on how you would set up tenant and such just in case you're in a position where you've got configuration manager, but not set up with uh, any of the cloud components at this point. Marius, is there a special agent to collect this data or does this come through standard channels? Uh, this comes through standard channels. So you need the latest uh, version of the client. Okay. Um, but yeah, it will go through the, the standard channels and no, no change needed there. Okay, thanks. Um, so then what we need to do as well in the client settings, um, we need to go and edit the client settings you've deployed. Um, we click on computer agent and scroll to the very bottom and we will see this enable endpoint analytics data collection. So if we change that to yes, then all of your machines will start talking and within uh, 24 hours usually uh, after enabling it in the tenant, you will see data starting to come in. So how do we verify that the uploads are happening as well? Um, so again, look, look, we go back to logs because reading logs is good. Uh, if we open the uh, CM Gateway Sync Upload Worker log in your configuration manager uh, installation directory in the logs directory, um, and what you're going to look for inside that is uh, batching. So what we've got highlight here. So that's telling you that it sent uh, records for six devices in that case. And by default, the uploads take place every 15 minutes. Uh, but don't expect the results obviously to appear in that time frame online. So now we're going to do a bit of a demo where we're looking at, as I said, three different environments. Uh, now, because because endpoint analytics requires um, a lot of data, it's not something I'm going to get out of my lab. So I'm going to show you. I have two customer environments here and our own environment, which I'll show you some more on um, after this runs through. But let's just start this video and I'll talk you through it. So we go to the endpoint management console and we click on reports. And here we click on endpoint analytics. Um, and this is a site that's that's currently configured. Now you can see the baseline there is uh, looking at 50 and our score is 55. And we can see a warning down below um, which I will just step back a little bit, uh, that we have 2,923 uh, devices with boot time slow by group policy. This is the problem. This is what we are talking about. And this is where you get the calls coming through to IT saying my machine is slow because we have a lot of GPOs in place. So with that, we can go along and we can look at the device performance and we can see stuff like the core boot time and group policy times. And we can see that the different machine types and the different types of hard drives. So we can very start quickly uh, building up a picture of what the, the best machines are in, in the organization and what the worst machines are. And the difference between solid state disks and, and uh, traditional hard drives. Um, so, I mean, looking at, at the figures there, a core boot time, which is in seconds, of 365 seconds is over five minutes. I mean, well, it's actually six minutes for that machine just to start. Um, and we have group policy processing time then of 352 seconds. Um, you know, th this is stuff that we see because we have, a. Um, if you're in an organization that has uh, deployed lots of group policy over the years, um, you probably haven't changed anything since maybe XP 
and you've still got a lot of redundant things happening um, and potentially group policies with errors and all kinds of things going into your machines. So what we and then, as I said, what we can do is you can start comparing uh, what devices look like. So here we have a, a HP ProBook 650, just to take one as an example. Um, and we see a really weird anomaly here that a solid state disk is taking longer to boot than the actual hard drive. So th there could be reasons for that as well. It could be um, the actual type of disk in there. Uh, typically, your SSD is going to start a lot quicker than than traditional spinning platter hard drives. OK, and then we can click on model performance up here. Now, what model performance will do is you have to have a minimum of 10 of the same devices in your tent for this stuff to start populating. Um, but then we can have a look and see on average uh, what each of these models, um, you know, its core boot time is and the core sign in time is. Um, and it's it's good value because we can actually go back to say uh, purchasing departments or your CIO or whatever and say, hey, you know the extra 50 euro or $50, whatever you're spending on this model, it actually makes sense because it is far more performant. So here we can click on the columns then and we can actually add in the, the group policy times as well. So we can see uh, what the what the um, the processing times are for those uh, grouped models as well. OK, so we see there that a, a ProBook 650 there, for instance, was taking 57 seconds and we can go in with the new UI um, that they've done good work in and we can sort that um, based on seconds. So a ProBook 650 G4 and this isn't to uh, point the finger at HP. This is just an environment with all HPs um, was taking 84 seconds for group policy to apply. It's not necessarily a reflection of the machine, of course, it's a reflection on what's going on in the background um, and that's why um, you know when we we looked at say the the, the video that unfortunately I didn't play the audio but um, when the machine was able to to get into windows within um, 12 seconds to an application um, that was a machine that was managed directly by Intune and using all of the, the cloud native stuff so here, if we look, take a look at the startup processes, we can actually see what is slowing down our machines. Now, OK, in this case, there's a particular security product there um, that does a lot of uh, hash checking. Um, I'm sure some of you come across it before. Um, and in that instance, it is causing the most delays company wide. Um, so as I said, if you want to start comparing and contrasting um, what the world looks like as a Microsoft native in environment compared to a third party environment. You can also do that through through endpoint analytics. So here we we can we look take a look at the the baseline. And as I said to you earlier on, we can actually go and create a new one. So we click on create. We'll put in, say, July because it's what we're doing here and call it July baseline. So now when we go back in and we take a look at the uh, the overview, we will see that we have a, um, a, a July drop down. So we can then go back and we can build that up over a period of time so that when uh, when we want to compare how things were, uh, we can do so. And if we scroll down here, we get to see very quickly. I mean, this is kind of nice stuff for uh, for reporting, but um, your typical uh, group policy time across the organization. Time to sign in screen, 10 seconds. Um, and all this information then you can present to, you, to your CIO. The warnings, as I said, show down below as well. Um, and you can see just down the bottom of it there, it says you have 1,887 devices with sign in times slowed by group policy. So at that point, you really need to start taking that information to your systems admin or to yourself if you're the admin as well, and start looking through all your GPOs to see um, what you can get rid of. And it's telling you, OK, yeah, you shouldn't really be using a spinning platter disk because on average they're 58 seconds slower 
um, to start. And I've, I've seen that even um, in my lab, you know, I, I, I've got solid state disks and I've seen uh, my labs spin up much quicker than uh, labs on, on SANS at, at customer sites because they're using um, traditional disks. So in this one now, we've just switched across to a co-managed um, environment, which is a, a little bit more optimal. Um, I'm sorry, uh, go back here. Um, as you can see, we've got a, a higher score. And if we scroll down, we can see that that the uh, the group policy um, uh, running time is down as far as one second in that instance. So that's quite a big difference going to show you between what uh, an optimal site looks like and what something that um, could do with a, a lot of refreshing looks like. Uh, so here we don't have as many warnings. It's telling us that we've nine devices with standard HDs. Um, we have three devices with slow log on times, uh, but that's not really uh, much compared to the, the other site. Um, this site that just happens to be all Dell, just different comparison, but we can see that the, the core boot up times again, um, mainly down to the fact that they, they have an optimal environment are going to be a lot less than what we would have seen in the, the last case. So if we take a look at group, policy boot times, okay, the, the worst we have there is a, a 20 second, uh, 28 second compared to over five minutes for group policy to apply in a site with uh, a lot of heavy GPO stuff going on. Okay, you get to see each of the models and whether they've got standard hard drive and SSD and so on. What we can do, we can arrange by model and manufacturer, and we can add and remove those columns as needed. Uh, if we take a look at the startup processes, uh, actually, well, yeah, click on model performance, and this, this again, this is an environment where there aren't as many models, um, but or, or as many models in with ten or more. So. We might have actually more models than this, as you would have seen from the list, but these are the ones that we have in bulk. Um, and again, you know, traditionally I always recommend buying the same model in bulk because you have less things to worry about. You have a single set of drivers to worry about. You have a single set of firmware releases to worry about, etc. And if we take a look at the starter processes, um, we can see a very much a different set of figures that are being reported here. So in this environment, we're using Microsoft Defender ATP. Um, yes, it's not doing as much checking as what we would have seen in the last environment with the uh, uh, checking of uh, file hashes and absolutely everything. Um, but you can very quickly see there's a significant th difference in what you would have in a total delay through the day. So the Defender, uh, Microsoft Defender ATP anti-malware service is causing a five minute delay across your organization on a daily basis. It's not really anything we should be overly worried about in that regard. So let's go to proactive remediations now and see what this can do. So in, in this instance, um, I'll stop this for a second, but when you create this, when I, I showed you creating the environment a minute ago, um, Microsoft will populate two of these automatically. So we've got a uh, restart stopped office uh, click to run. Uh, updater, and we've also got update stale group policies. See, that these are any group policies that haven't updated in seven days. That you can stick this on as a remediation action, and it will go ahead and force a policy check, or it will force the office to click to run um, uh, update agent to start. And in this case, what I've done as well is I've just put in the PowerShell script that's going to check for um, OneDrive known folder move. So I'm basically checking the profile of your documents and explorers, explorer shell folders to see if everything has gone through to OneDrive. And I'm doing that because it was part of a um, file server uh, to OneDrive migration, which was done uh, with, with uh, OneDrive known folder move. So uh, if there were any users out there which had uh, redirected folders, uh, this is what we're looking for. So we have with issues. 26 and what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if they're using a, uh, a backslash backslash UNC path. Um, so then I can drill into that and I can see what the machines are. 
um, and tell IT, OK, they've had redirected folders in place, uh, which don't work with OneDrive no, no, uh, no folder move. So they need to do something about it. And if we go and have a look at the update sale group policies, we can see what our compliance uh, looks like over time. So here we have 103 devices running without issues. And again, like being preview, I've seen some of the figures being skewed because I know there's a lot more devices in this environment than what I'm seeing. Um, but this was only recently enabled. Um, OK, and this is what I'm talking about here. If group policy refreshes older than seven days, um, yeah, you can go ahead and, and force uh, a GPO refresh. So if we go and edit the settings, we can see what it's doing. And it's basically just using PowerShell. So it is a PowerShell command. That in this instance, it's all defined by Microsoft because it was delivered. Um, and it has both the detection and remediation script. These should look very, very similar to what you would have seen um, with configuration baselines in uh, configuration manager and well, configuration items in this section. Um, and we can see it's just running a GB update for us. So for these settings, Maurice, um, the so the, like this is read only because it came from Microsoft, correct? Exactly. This is why this one is grayed out. Now, if I move on slightly more. Uh, Okay, I do have one here a bit further on. Uh, let me go here slightly. Actually, just one thing I was just going to show you. I, I, I'll, I'll show go you an ed editable one now in a minute. Um, but when, when you're assigning these, uh, by default, when you create a proactive mediation, it will do it every day. Um, so that's if you want, you can go ahead and change that. Um, and you can change the frequency so we can have it as uh, hourly if we really want to, uh, daily at a specific time, or we can just do it once as well. So similar kind of scheduling options, what you would have seen with configuration baseline. And just want to fast forward a bit. Oh, here we go. Um, so this is the, um, the OneDrive script that I, I've got set up. So if we take a look at properties in this one, it looks slightly different. OK, we're going to run it in the user context, which again is different. So we've got that run script using log on, uh, logged on credentials. Uh, we're checking shell folders match OneDrive hyphen and then the uh, corporate identity. And what we're doing here is we're writing the output. And this is kind of useful because, I mean, we have X is zero and X at one, which are going to tell us the you know, true or false uh, fa you know, success or failure. But also we, we, we can gather some um, text out of that so then we can go in and we can say okay which machines have issues we can grab the user who has the issue and we can feed that back to it say okay you need to go and uh, manually remove the um, redirected um, folder in this instance because it's not done through group policy uh, or else we need a powershell script and, and, and perform a remediation action to actually go ahead and do that uh, and now we are into a standalone Intune only managed environment. And again, the figure has gone up again. So we can see that the startup performance is higher. Um, and if we take a look at our baseline, now we can actually see that we did dip slightly. OK, so we were much higher at 91. We're now at 87. One thing that, that slowed us down uh, this month is the course sign-in, um, which I haven't looked into yet. Um, oops, sorry. My bad. OK, but showing in red, so that's going to show us that there's been uh, a degradation in performance in that area. But again, like group policy, of course, is going to take zero seconds. To sign in screen it is on average taking 15 seconds, so it's not massively off uh, where Brad was with his 12 to the responsive. Um, we can click on device performance again, and we will see the uh, course sign in times. So I think uh, uh, 
uh, my device, uh, which is the MDSL3, uh, is taking on average 14 seconds to start, uh, to, to boot, and 20 seconds, 27 seconds um, to a full responsive uh, machine. Now, I've got a lot of things that are set up in startup, and my machine isn't as clean as Brad's, um, but it's it's really not bad. It's it's a far cry from what we would have seen in the uh, the other environment. Uh, but if we take a look at pro re proactive remediations here, we have a lot more. Uh, and this is because some of the stuff that, that Jan has been doing um, with uh, patching. Uh, so we are actually patching our applications with proactive remediation. Uh, we have integration with uh, Patch My PC. Um, and essentially what it's doing is through Azure automation, it is creating packages and then determining whether we have them, um, and then basically prompting up a, um, a toast notification um, every two days to say that you're on the latest version, you're not, and it will force down the software. So this is third-party patching with through proactive remediation. And incidentally, uh, I actually got a push notification just as we were uh, having a chat earlier on uh, during the round table that I think one of my products has gone out of date. So I, I did quickly screenshot that. So I have that in, in here. But um, so here I, I've, I've blurred all this out. Uh, there is actually a blog article on, on this stuff, but um, there's a detection script and a remediation script. So in the detection, all we are looking for is the app to detect and we're getting the application name. OK. Uh, then we are looking for, uh, which I've pixelated out, but basically the version of the application, which in this case is Adobe Reader DC uh, 20. And then we're popping a toast notification if it's if it needs to be updated, and we're going ahead and we're invoking the update. Again, we can go over here and we can look and see what machines are compliant, not compliant. Uh, typically, if they're not compliant, it's that they've left their machine on. So again, we can check this with computer uptime. Um, I'm I'm a devil for doing this myself. You know, just uh, closing the lid on the machine, come back in the morning, opening it up, and everything is fine. But if we want to ensure that the machine is being rebooted at least once a week, uh, if we just go back slightly, we can see if OS uptime days is greater or equal to seven. In this case, what we are going to do is we're going to say it is non-compliant. It's exit one. OK, otherwise we're going to say it's compliant and exit zero. Then for the remediation script, we're going to pop that toast notification and we're going to display some text to the user. Um, in this instance, what we're going to tell them is that basically their machine needs to be rebooted. Let me scroll down here. OK, please save your work and restart your device today. Thank you in advance. Okay. I have a few okay. questions for you whenever you're ready. Yeah, OK, do you, yeah, do you want to shoot now or do you want to leave? I've only got a, maybe a few slides left. Nope, so go ahead. Do it. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. OK, so script output for the win, of course, uh, as I mentioned before, you've you've got to love PowerShell because it's what you need to use here. Um, so if you don't know how to PowerShell script, get learning. Um, use the right output commandlet because it will pass through the text in remediation. Um, you'll actually see that whether it, start, it started to fail and you can click on columns and see the output as well. So if you, that's why when you're, you're actually scripting it, give a nice piece of uh, you know, descriptive uh, wording in English or whatever your language is to tell you actually what's happening. Exit codes, exit zero, of course, all is good. Exit one, this is bad, I need to do something. And if you have a remediation script, it will run that. Um, and what you can do is you can out converting your configuration baselines to, to uh, proactive remediations to cover um, both configuration manager and Intune managed devices. Um, yeah, so again, just reaffirming the fact it's more like uh, configuration baselines. Um, 
and you can use it just with a detection script. So if that's all you want to do, as you can see from the asterisk, it's the only thing that is mandatory. And of course, we can use it for a, a load of different um, things to do. I mean, registry entries, check for folder remapping, particular server installations, and even you know, as we talked earlier on with the um, the OEM bloatware, for instance. If we decided so, we could create a remediation script that checked for all software packages from the vendor, uh, built up a list and uninstalled them as a remediation script. So that would run on all of your autopiloted devices to get rid of all of that stuff that you don't want. Um, if you don't, you know, want to go down the route of either wiping the device or paying extra for a signature image and so on. Um, OK, uh, leveraging the, the Azure automation, it's what I talked about there a minute ago, the way we are patching internally. Uh, Jan Kettleskanke, who works with me in Cloudway, um, he has a nice blog post on this. Um, it is fairly comprehensive. There's a lot to it um, with Azure automation run books and accounts and everything. Um, do take time to read it if that's something that interests you. Um, at the moment, there is integration with Patch My PC and Nikolai Anderson has a a scripting method as well to to patch uh, applications that's uh, also catered for. Uh, this was the prompt I was talking about. Oops, earlier on, um, this actually came up on my screen saying I need to update Snagit. Um, so kind of cool, comes up, uh, and this of course is using uh, Martin uh, Bengston's um, Toast-based notifications. Um, and there's a link to it here if you want to integrate that into your remediation scripts. As I said, keep saying before, it's uh, it's a preview, so there are known issues. Um, data can take time to populate. Um, familiarize yourself with the documents because there are some uh, known issues that show up on the troubleshooting guide. Um, if we just open that, and it's across here. And we can stuff okay, like startup process not available on some devices. Uh, there was a hot fix for a uh, configuration manager uh, to, to fix that. Uh, OS version not appearing for some devices. Um, you know, remediation failed, hardware infantry failed the process. So there, there are some issues that are still happening. Uh, but again, being preview and it is being something that's been worked on. Um, the other thing that Adam kind of touched on, ensure your network uh, firewall admin is not blocking or, or doing SSL decryption, stuff like that, or IPS on these um, in particular. Um, because if configuration managers talking at today's or you have entry managed devices talking it on your network, um, SSL decryption breaks a lot of stuff. Um, so. And here's a bunch of useful links. Um, that contains some uh, examples of what you will use with um, PowerShell scripts for product remediations. Okay, we can kind of look down here. Uh, clear certificates. Certificates would be a good use case. Uh, so if you wanted to detect if a certificate was expiring or flag it to a user, um, I have a, a script basically for detecting if a, a laptop's battery's health is bad. Um, and you can actually get it to email IT with the uh, the model details. And with that, thank you. And we can move on to questions now. All right, thanks, Morris. Uh, a few questions for you here. Um, let me find where I was. Um, let's see. There's a question, I, well, I think you answered it. How often is data being sent in size? It looks like it's a per per item type of collection schedule. Is that right? Oh, yeah. What, just run that past me. Uh, how often is data being sent, and what's the size of data being sent okay. from the client? I didn't quantify the size of the data being sent, but it, so if, it, if it's configuration manager, um, the data is sent every, it's click, well, it's sent every 15 minutes from, from the device. Um, this, I think the same applies to in -tune managed devices as well. Okay. Um, but it, but it, if it's like a proactive remediation and stuff like that, um, that depends on the scheduling that you've got set up. So, um, as I said, you can have a, um, a single, a once a daily event or an hourly event or just a once off as well. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, next question. Is it possible to triage and correlate with other events? I don't think this doesn't feed anything else today, right? You can't push it anywhere else to correlate. No, it's not feeding anything else. But what I suppose you could do is uh, something along the lines of what Adam was doing. So, you know, gather the data. It, it's it's exportable. You can grab it through graphs or you can export it into, uh, into Excel and then do things through Power BI. So you could end up grabbing data from um, other sources as well to do whatever correlation you need. But yeah, I suppose that's the way you would have to do it. OK, all right, cool. Uh, let's see. We talked about um, the baselines a little bit. The question is, can we create or modify? And I think we showed that they're read only, right? But you can create your own, right? Yeah, so the, the Microsoft ones that we saw um, showing up, in, maybe if I just pull up a browser. Uh, bear with me a second. Share this out again. OK, so if we take a look at these. Um, yeah, the two Microsoft ones, they are completely read only. Um, but if we take, wanted to take a look at something else. As you can see, you can go and do whatever you want. OK. Now, the Microsoft ones are you able to disable those as well. Like if you didn't want those or do you always get those? Uh, do you always get these? These come in by default. OK, so just the just the two of them at the moment. OK, but you choose um, to deploy them. They don't like automatically be deployed then, right? No, no, you choose to deploy okay. them. Yeah, so okay. that, like, I mean, here you've got the update group, uh, group policy, which mm -hmm. in our, our circumstance would not work because we have completely 100% cloud managed devices. So um, you would have to go in here, assignments, and you would have to assign that way. I see. OK, cool. Uh, let's see what else here. Um, let's see when you enable when you enable the enable upload endpoint admin center in CN, it says it needs global access to create an Azure AD application. Where is that in Azure? Where is that in Azure? Creating an Azure AD application, I believe, is what what there's asking. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. I'll see. Can I get that? Up top is a good question. Get into my have a look at my registered apps. I need to go and pin myself. Just give me <laughs> one minute. Problem. I did post a link to our survey, by the way, so uh, please go out and fill that out when you have a couple minutes so that we get some better feedback So for uh, to help us plan for our next meeting. Waiting for Pim to elevate me so I can get a list of my apps and we'll have a look. And let me also post the swag it so that you can start to register for the giveaway. Uh, let's see another question, Morris. Uh, when are you gonna when are you gonna hook driver automation into this? <laughs> uh, when I get when when I got time. <laughs> um, yeah, how long is a piece of string at this stage? Uh, yeah, I yeah I'm I'm swamped. It's on my list of things to do um, for sure. I. I have a method already worked out. Um, so in in the latest version of the the driver tool, uh, basically I have I'm generating an XML package which can be placed anywhere. So it can be housed e either in a web in a one web service or you can drop it down as a package or whatever. But um, with proactive remediations, you can read in the contents of the XML, um, determine the versions then of the um, drivers and firmware that you have approved and get it to do something. I just 
I have it in my head, but just haven't had the time. Yeah. Sounds like some work. Yep. Yeah, it is, it is some work. Uh, it's the gift that keeps giving, that one. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting kudos. People appreciate uh, your tool. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a, what, what, I can't think of the right word, a labor of love. Is that what they say, right? It's a, it, it's a, it is a labor of love at this point. Yeah. yeah. I, actually, yeah okay. <laughs> I'm actually just looking at my list of apps here. Uh, I think it's the MS Autom- no, it's not the MSA automation app. Just give me one sec. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it 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 takes a lot of my time that that one, um, and it's fun because uh, vendors are always consistent and always doing things that you don't expect, right? <laughs> Um, bear with me. Yeah, so there are two, it looks like there are two uh, app. Now I'm not going to show this because it's in a customer environment here, but there are two config manager service account um, apps that get creative with it. Uh, that's because I'm using uh, config manager with it. Um, okay, yeah, I can, I can I can look further into it anyway and I'll answer it back on on the chat. Okay, great. Yeah, and if you want to send it later as well, I mean we can throw it in the in the slides or whatever if you get more information. Yep. Okay. Okay, great. Um, I'll give one more minute on Swag It. Let me share back my screen. We're just about wrapped up here for the day. That's one thing about these sessions, and that's something we want in your survey feedback, right? I mean, these are kind of marathon sessions. We put a lot of time, a lot of time in a day in these. So uh, I threw a question in there just to get your feedback. If um, you're, you're, you know, is, is this worth your day right or do we need to try to only do half a day or, or whatever else so please uh fill out that survey and um i'll uh i see a couple more coming in on the drawing so i'll just give it a few more seconds and then i'll i'll click the magic button here uh, i want to thank i know adam's gone but um big big thank you to adam for swapping with me as well um just with the, the time zone difference i got roped into dealing with something so yeah, work got in the way, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, we appreciate you taking your Friday night for this. Uh, almost 5 p.m. Well, that, that was hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was hours ago. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, while we uh, oh, Jason Reed, you won swag. Grab a screenshot of that and send it send it my way, and um, yeah, I'll get that sent out to you. Any other parting comments, questions, any other feedback? Let's see. Somebody asked if the driver automation and CM admin service are working and documented. Working, yes. Documented, no. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the latest version of, um, of the script, which is on GitHub, um, doesn't use the web service anymore at all. It uses the admin API. Um, so you can go and have a look at it. Um, it is kind of explained in the in the script file itself. Um, I, it's just, yeah, time constraints. I, I, I think even I released an update for that driver automation tool that people don't even know about features in it. And I said I would do a blog post to finish, uh, to, sorry, to follow up. Um, and that was about two weeks ago. Um, so I, I, I've just been absolutely swamped. So uh, uh, apologies, but th- I, I will get a blog post to explain, uh, everything that's in, in there. Yeah. It's, it's hard to keep up with all of it. Um, yeah. Somebody asked, uh, is, okay, no console needed. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, good. Okay. Well, with that, I think we're good, to, to end this for the day. So, uh, Really appreciate all your time. Um, hope to have you back again. Um, feel free to send me anything else you'd like uh, Murray's to add to the uh, to the slides and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll make recordings available. And um, thanks again. Appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, everyone. All right, guys.
Have a good weekend. You too. Mm-hmm, bye.